All right, so in this video, we are talking about the depth map in DaVinci Resolve. And again, this is a studio version feature. So if you don't have the studio version, this won't be available. It uses the neural engine AI stuff in DaVinci Resolve. So that's why you simply need the, the, the studio version to do this. So uh, there's a lot of uh, videos already on showing how to use a depth map and kind of what you can do with it. But I thought I had this idea of something I wanted to test out. I kind of wanted to walk through text. Uh, so I thought, why not make this the example of uh, what we can do here? Because that's slightly different from what we can do with the magic mask that we covered earlier, that kind of tracks a specific object or person throughout the scene. And you can mask that out. You can put text behind this object. But what if I wanted to walk through text through the scene? So we're just gonna play around with the depth map in this video and see if we can get to that. But first, of course, we're going to look at what it is. And then as we progress in that, we will see if we can actually make it work to put text behind me and then let me walk through it. So without anything more said, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and see what we can do. We're inside DaVinci Resolve and the clip that we're working with today is this clip where I am just walking through the scene and coming closer and closer. I did already do a grade on it. If we show the combine node, it looks like this. Let's just jump back. It was in log like this, and now I've just graded it. Because the important part in this video is not really the grading, it's more what we can use the depth map for. So let's make another node after my compound node here, after my grade, and open the effects tab. I already searched for DE, which brought up the depth map as a result. So let's drag that onto our clip here. Now, immediately you will see that it has the preview on and it's set to better. For adjusting these things, I'm going to put it to faster, but normally when rendering and using it, I'll put it to better. This is just going to make it a little bit easier for this tutorial, I think. But essentially what we want to do here is that I want to try and target myself here. So around the middle of the scene, I want to put me coming through text. But before we get to that part in a little bit, let me just quickly walk you through what these things over here in depth have depth map means first up we have the preview we have the quality we just went through that we have the preview which just turns on and off this preview that you see you know the inverted does the opposite of the selection and then we can refine it and adjust it so what it did now is just kind of it made it own its own selection you can see when we get close it's kind of selected everything when we use it in here you can see the uh, wider parts and the brighter parts as what it's selecting so this will be the alpha, this will be the output. If we just turn the preview off now and we started grading, you can see only the parts that this has actually selected will be graded or adjusted. So that, let's turn it on again so we can see what we're doing. And then we have three different sections here that we can then grade and adjust. So the first one is the levels. We can adjust the far limit. So how far in the background, what it's tracking, what it's kind of seeing as far away and close by. Um, so if we turn this on, we can say the far limit is closer than what it was now. So now you can see the whole background is black. And then if we turn down the near limit as well, you can see now we should have a pretty much a perfect selection of me. It's completely bright. Let's try and turn the preview off and just turn off the offset. You can see now we actually have a perfect mask of me. Now, I do think it helps that in this case, the background is blurry. This was shot at 200 millimeters. If 2.8 so the whole background is super blurry bokeh and i'm super close so for this neural engine right now it would be pretty easy to determine this is out of focus this is me the background is further away i am closer in the foreground so normally if you have a room where different things will be at the same plane level as i am here it will also select that but you can kind of see as we turn the file limit down that it's selecting more things in the background as well. So if you wanted the perfect selection, this would probably be it. You can try and scroll past. You can see as I get closer to the background, it is selecting some parts of the background here, probably the ground that it can see close to me, the trees or the leaves, plants over here. It's kind of detecting that when we have it set to this. And as it goes through, it can kind of do that. And if we close down the near limit, the far limit, we should be able to just kind of have a perfect selected mask. Now this is all good. We can see there's a little bit of different things it's selecting as well. We can try and isolate it so we can select a specific target depth that we want to have. Now right now we have it set uh, pretty, let's open it up again, a little bit more here. And 
turn off the isolation. Now we have a lot more selected. If we turn on the isolation, we can kind of try to target a specific depth that we want. So now this is the target depth. And then if I move back and forth, we can see that it has kind of selected this area. So we didn't have to adjust the map levels as much. Then we have the tolerance of like how much, how little it's actually doing, how much of a slice inside of it. You can kind of see it as layers throughout the whole scene. And this is one layer and the tolerance of how specific that layer should be, how soft or how strong it should be as well. And then for the post-processing, we can add a filter. You can kind of, you can see, now we get a little bit more texture here to my face and we can probably adjust the, the plane level here and the tolerance to get a better selection of that. But then the post filter and the contrast here can help us make a better or worse selection here and also blur it out a little bit. So maybe our selection is not as strong. So these are all the tools that you have in here to kind of make the perfect mask that you want to have. Now, the more, the deeper you go into this, the more specific it becomes as well. So first up here, of course, it makes its own selection. Then you are adjusting the far and the near limit and the gamma. So that's kind of high level. Then you go into the specific depth that you can control, like the specific slice, if you will. And then you can go down to finesse it even more and kind of really dial in that masks that you've made. So these are kind of the options. You have some advanced options. I honestly haven't really played around with this. I've just left it at automatic. I don't know if it does a big difference, but for the most part, I will just leave this alone. Unless you really struggle with something, you would probably play around with those. But other than that, I would leave it like this. I'm just gonna reset everything again here. I'm just gonna reset the entire thing. Because what I am attempting to do here as set is that I want to have me in this scene. Where did I go? I disappeared. Here we are. I want to have some text coming in here. And then I kind of want the depth map to determine that now I'm further away. And now I'm closer and then move through it. We could probably get something like this with the magic mask and some kind of opacity mode and move through it or something like that. But I kind of want to see if we can make it work like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this layer as my base layer. We just deleted the node in here already. So I want to use this as my base layer. So what I want to do is I'm going to add another one, holding down option, dragging it up and dragging it up one more because I want my text layer to be in between here. And we can actually just add the text layer now because that will help us see what we're doing. So go to titles. I want my text plus here. Just gonna drag that out all the way. And I am just gonna call this depth map. I'm gonna use puppins because that's what I always do. And I'm just gonna drag out the size here. So we have a big, nice text that fills up the whole scene that we can then walk through later on. So it's kind of moving everywhere. We could track it, but for now, we're just gonna leave it in the middle. So what I wanna do is, oh, I wanna turn this layer on again. So the text has disappeared. Move into the color tab and we're gonna make another node. We're gonna put the depth map on here. We should see it selecting. We're kind of in the middle now, which is where I want to move through the text. So I'm going to try and, first I'm gonna try and see if I can just adjust it to kind of get there. I'm gonna put it to faster again. So it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Now we remove the background and then the near limit. Now we have a perfect selection just see if the gamma does anything and turn the gamma all the way up. Looks like we have a pretty good selection now. Now, as we get back further, we can see that we are losing out some of the things here. So maybe just see if we can adjust things a little bit more. Now we kind of have a full mask, but if I'm being honest, what I hoped that it would do would see that I was further away and then I was coming closer. I am getting bigger in the frame. So like I was hoping the neural engine would kind of process that and see that as me coming closer. It didn't, so we're gonna have to finesse it in a different way. But that was kind of my hope that it could do that. But other things that we have is that we have keyframes here. So let me just turn on the preview again. My target here is that we're actually moving through the text at this point. So here I'm gonna keyframe my selection here because I think from moving on forward, it's doing a pretty good job. I'm just gonna go back to my keyframe. And this is where I wanted, we can also turn the Gamma. Now we're just gonna leave the gamma actually. Okay, so here I'm gonna move through the scene. Now what we could do is we can go back a little bit here and then make 
some adjustments. So let's see, we want the near limit to be gone. Kind of want everything to be black, I think. So I'm just going to put the far limit up. Something like this. And I'm just going to play it through actually and see what it does. I'm slowly coming into the scene. It doesn't really look good per se, but let's just try and go back here. If we put it to better, it might do a better job. Just going to move it through manually here. See what happens. Now it becomes really slow on the computer to do anything. So I can't really see if it's doing a good job or not. Let's just assume that we're actually getting the depth here. What we can do with these adjustments is that we can kind of create the emulation of different depth ourselves. So this is what I've done here. Just kind of set this is where I want to end. This is my target. And this is where I want it to start. If it would actually go back like this. So turning the effects tab off, I'm just going to right click here, add an alpha output and combine these two. That should give me, if we jump in here, a good mask. If we move a little bit further into the scene. And I made a mistake because, of course, we need to turn off the preview. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now you can see we have pretty good selection. There's a little bit here that doesn't work. But other than that, it's a pretty good selection. If we jump in here, we see me popping up, adding the background back in. Now there's no difference. Adding the text. Now we have the depth map behind me. One thing I see is there's a pretty harsh, harsh edge. So before we let it render too much, let's jump back in here and go to the effects tab. I'm going to go add some post processing and I'm just gonna add, zoom in here to see what I'm doing. Just gonna add a little bit of blur and see if we can finesse that harsh edge out a little bit and then maybe add a, remove a little bit of contrast as well. Yeah. I think that looks pretty good. Now it's a lot softer and a lot better of selection. So let's just jump back in and this is gonna take a little bit. Now I've put it to playback. You can see the menu up here and render cache and put it to smart. That means that this red line here should pretty much start becoming blue very slowly. You can see it's starting here. So I'm just gonna skip forward to this being done so we can move on and see the result of what we actually did. All right, so it's still rendering and it takes absolutely forever. So I think we're just going to go ahead because it's rendered enough that we can see the result of this. So let's just skip up to full screen here and see where it's at. It looks pretty good so far. And then soon we should be moving to and through the depth map text. Yes, we have a little bit of problem here, so we could probably fix that. I'm not going to do that right now because it took forever for it to end. But I think this is a pretty cool effect that you can just kind of have this go through. Now, I did do one other thing. Uh, so I have another timeline here. I've actually pre-rendered this because, again, it took forever. It's not perfect, not at all. But what I tried to do here was to kind of put the text so it was staying. You can see my tracking also didn't work perfectly in, in Fusion. But here it moves through and the text kind of stays. So using an adjustment layer and then going into Fusion and mapping the text here. It's a pretty cool way of doing something like this. And I actually think this is a really cool tool for this. Now, one thing, if you jump back here, that I probably would do different is say, okay, where do I move through? I end here, I start here. So if we go into the color tab again here, we can probably even just see, okay, this is where we started. So if you go, few frames back, just gonna shorten this part of the clip and then go forward till we are somewhere. Now it's not rendering very good anymore, so we're gonna put it to faster. It's gonna see here we've moved through it. So probably gonna put this down as well. Like doing it to a 23 second clip in 4K was probably not the best smartest idea I've had, but now at least it should play through. And now I have it set to faster, so I don't think it'll be as good. Now you can see that it's flickering a lot more, uh, but at least it is working. And you can see that it's probably, that would be good enough. Apart from then we have to have the text behind. So maybe it's not, maybe you do need to render out the full thing. Or you can just kind of, as I did in the final thing here, just kind of, faded out again afterwards. So at least until the text is faded out, that's what we could do. So as soon as the, the text here, we come through here, 
Good solid text in settings, opacity, move to here, turn it all the way down. And then now we should be able to see that it just moves through and then the text disappears. And now we just have our normal clip again. Just a few ways that you can work with it and you can use it. The depth map is super cool, but yeah, it takes a little bit of fiddling around. I let you decide for yourself if it's something that you can use or not. But I think this effect was pretty cool to make and a funny little experiment as well. That was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I hope that you can use the depth map for something yourself. I don't know how real world scenario this is in terms of making movies, but as an effect, as a title, as a something to kind of spice it up a little bit, maybe it's a fun thing to do. It does require a little bit of processing power, but well, I think it was fun. This is one of the scenarios that I can see myself use the depth map in the future. So for me, it's definitely was a fun experiment to see if I could actually do it. And I'm happy that I succeeded in this case. I'll definitely be playing around a lot more with the depth map in the future. As I've, I haven't really used it that much up until now, I just got this, this idea and I wanted to test it out. So yeah, that's where we got to with, with this video. So without anything more to say, I'll just wish you a great day and until the next time, take care.